Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Joseph's. Welcome to Mass today. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, today for announcements, first and foremost, uh, it is prom season coming up um, in Makokoda. For those of you watching online, uh, prom is next weekend. So as a reminder for prom, because the children uh, who go on prom, they're going to be either at prom or so tired, they probably won't be wanting to get up in the morning. Uh, we have an additional mass whenever there's prom in the evening at the place. So next Sunday, we have a mass in Makokoda at 6 p.m. Uh, for the prom kids. And then uh, prom for uh, Easton Valley is on May 1st, from what I hear. So Sunday, May 2nd, we'll have an additional Mass here at Preston at St. Joseph's at 6 p.m. So uh, it's, it's intended for the, for the kids who go on prom, but anyone's welcome to come if it works better in your schedule. So we'll have an additional Mass here at St. Joseph's at 6 p.m. on May 2nd. Uh, also asked to announce that there is another COVID vaccine clinic um, in Makokoda on April 23rd, and uh, it'll have a second shot scheduled on May 13th. Um, if you want more information, I uh, uh, encourage you to go on Facebook um, on Oster Houses. Uh, they have all the sign-up info there. Um, and finally, uh, it's First Communion Weekend here at St. Joseph's, so we, we celebrate our First Communion kids. Um, they'll receive their First Communion today. Uh, it's exciting. Um, so during Communion time, they will come forward. Uh, we'll, we'll do uh, each child individually. Um, then once both of the kids have gone, then I'll invite their individual families, uh, only their families, to come forward um, and they'll receive, you know, down the center aisle and go back to their pews. Then once all of the families have gone from these, from these uh, children, uh, then we'll do communion as normal, doing the one and three this way, then two and four this way. So first it'll be the children, then their families, and then we'll go communion as normal from there. All right, let us stand for our St. Joseph prayer. A moment. I'm not sure if you can remember back to your own first communion, but it's a special day. I know they're all kind of nervous right now, but they're going to do great. All right, and let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord of, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Trinity, one God. Have mercy on us. Holy Mary. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Noble Son of the House of David. Pray for us. Light to patriarchs. Pray for us. Husband of the Mother of God. Pray for us. Guardian of the Virgin. Pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God. Pray for us. Faithful Guardian of Christ. Pray for us. Head of the Holy Family. Joseph, chaste and just. Pray for us. Joseph, prudent and brave. Pray for us. Joseph, obedient and loyal. Pray for us. Patron of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Model of workers. Pray for us. Example to parents. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of family life. Pray for us. Comfort of the troubled. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Patron of the dying, Pray for us. terror of evil spirits, Pray for us. protector of the church, Pray for us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God made a master of his household. And put in all Let us pray. Almighty God, in your infinite wisdom and love, you chose Joseph to be the husband of Mary, the mother of your son. As we enjoy his protection on earth, may we have the help of his prayers in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us greet our neighbor.
Tigers back there too. Whoever wanted to bite it, they can. Just light them there. Right, they're going to light them. Why don't you just light them? That's going to be too dangerous. And let us gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and my sisters, as we celebrate in this Easter season, this joy of this time, uh, we gather together around this altar, knowing that Christ is truly with us in the breaking of the bread and the bread and wine that we are about to celebrate. And so as we gather together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our own sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Reading from the Act of the Apostles, Peter said to the people, The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom your hand over and denied of Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you, the author of life you put to death. But now God has risen him from the dead. Of this we are witness. Now I know, brothers, that you have acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The world the word, word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world is the way we may know the way we may be sure we know him is to keep his commandments those who say i know him but do not keep his commandments are liars and the truth is not in him them but if but anyone keeps his word the love of god is truly perfected in him the word of the lord The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While well, they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord.
today we celebrate First Communion in our church. And I'm not sure if you can remember back to your own First Communion, uh, to that special day in your own life. It could have been a week ago. It could have been, it could have been 80 years ago. Uh, for me, it was 24 years ago, about 24. And even though a lot of my memories from that far back are kind of foggy, this day still sticks in my mind vividly. I still remember uh, gathering in the back of my own home church and processing forward and getting to my pew and being a little relieved I can finally sit down. I still remember when I ate the body of Christ for the first time and thinking, this tastes different than I thought it would. I still remember tasting the blood of Christ and doing the cringe, like, oh, uh, it, it, for the, it always happens the first time you taste the blood of Christ. Um, I still remember the party afterwards and the cake, holding the cake for the picture and all that sort of stuff. It's a day I shouldn't rightly have that much memory of, but it still sticks in my mind. I still remember all of that grace, all of that, all of that day. It's a grace that I do have that memory, because our first communion is a moment of amazing, of, of great grace. And you never know when you'll find these moments of grace, but they happen throughout your life, and you'll, you'll undoubtedly experience many moments of grace uh, as you grow older. Um, and we hear about a moment of grace today in our gospel, uh, a very real encounter with Christ that left these disciples amazed with joy. The disciples meet the risen Lord in a, in a real, in a visible way. They see him. They can touch him. They see his wounds and scars. See and believe, Jesus told them. This is the last of the resurrection accounts we'll get in the, uh, in the Easter season. Um, but whether we realize it or not, all of these resurrection accounts where, they, where, he, where he appears to the disciples, they all, they all point to what we're doing today. First, there's a communal aspect. We, we, after rising from the dead, uh, Jesus appeared to groups of people, always two or more people. He never appeared solitary or uh, singularly to one person. And secondly, the after, after appearing to them, there was always some sort of meal whether it was uh, breakfast on the seashore, whether it was bread at the Emmaus, or what we hear about today, Jesus eating baked fish, there's always a meal involved. And after these encounters, the disciples gained a deeper understanding of his message, his mission, his, his ideas of what they were supposed to do. And they often come, Jesus often came bearing this message of peace. And in the end, they left. They went out back into the world, and they were changed. Make no mistake, what happened 2,000 years ago is happening right here today. Christ is with us. The disciples had Jesus right in front of them physically. They, he, they saw him. But we have Jesus as well. We may not see him uh, standing in front of us, but we have him in the real presence of the Eucharist, in the body and blood. Something that's very special as well. When you think about what is happening today, what's unfolding here before us, we should be like the disciples, full of joy. And then we should be profoundly humbled. Christ invites us at every Eucharist to encounter him, to share a meal with him, to touch him, to receive him, to make him part of us, and then to take him out into the world. Which means that the resurrection we celebrate this Easter season wasn't just a moment in history, something of the past. It's in the present. It's right here and now. It's what we're celebrating around this table in just a moment. It goes on in our lives. Every time you receive the body and blood of Jesus, whether it's the first time, whether it's the thousandth time or the hundred thousandth time, if we choose, the moment we receive the Eucharist, we're changed. We're changed more into his body and to his blood. We become more like Christ every time we receive the Eucharist. My friends, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, because of Easter morning, we are alive, alive in Christ. And when we receive the Eucharist, some of us for the first time today, he's alive in us. And that is a joyful thing, no matter how long as it, as it has been since our own First Communion.
and let us say, let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to pray to God for our prayers, uh, we humbly ask that he grant them this morning. For our church, may it continue to spread God's love in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For everyone making their first communion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the tr troops fighting for our, their, our freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the police officers that that they stay safe in these troubled times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's people, the church, may shine with light of faith, warm, it, the warmth of love, and the comfort of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we pray in particular for Arnold and Doris Bean, whom your hand, whom we remember in a special way, though the intentions of this mess. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, be with us now and always, and grant all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great, great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a social distancing sign of peace. Peace with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Just another reminder for communion. Uh, that will allow the First Communion students to come forward first with their parents. Then after the First Communion students have gone with their parents, then encourage the rest of their family members to come uh, down the center and go off to the sides, uh, back to their pews for communion. Um, then after, after their family is gone, then we'll do the normal first and third pews going this way, then second and fourth going this way. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness on your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you to our choir for singing. Beautiful job. And especially, uh, congratulations to our first community students today on the first communion. Congratulations. Great job today. Uh, Deacon John and I will process out, then we'll make our way straight back for pictures. Um, so we'll have pictures immediately after Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh